If you turn to John chapter 14 with me. And a lot of the verses I'm going to use will be in the book of John. So if you, if you like looking at the scripture while I read them to you, just kind of stay and keep your Bible open uh, to the book of John. And uh, there are a few that I'm going to go in different areas and I'll just say them to you if you trust me. And I'll read John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. We, we remember in the Bible, uh, disciples saying to Jesus at one time, Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. And, and in, in, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So my attempt this morning is to help us with our unbelief and put a little more substance to our faith in this message on heaven. So I'm going to read uh, John 14, 1 through 3, and then I'll have a word of prayer. Let not your heart be troubled. <clears throat> you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I do pray that you would uh, uh, help us in our unbeliefs, that you would increase our faith this morning as we are headed for a place that is far beyond our imaginations, but the best we know how, and as exciting as it is, we look forward to that day. And I pray that you'd bless now and that you'd help me through the Holy Spirit to bring this message for I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jesus said these words almost in response to what Peter said in the chapter just before that. So we're going to go back to chapter 13. <clears throat> And he says to the disciples in verse 33, little children, yet a little while I'm with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you. And what he's saying is I'm about to depart. And he's saying it to his disciples. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Can I say it this way? Peter was troubled. <clears throat> didn't Jesus say in what we read in uh, John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled? This is kind of the beginning of what Jesus, why he said, let not your heart be troubled. Peter was troubled. <clears throat> now, Peter and the other disciples knew because Jesus had told them, even at the Passover or when they, when they uh, had the first communion, that he was going to go. And they kind of sensed it all along, but you know... They're as human as you and I are to this day. And you and I struggle with our faith. There, now I can see it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Maybe I should put these back on because I can really see it now. <clears throat> Peter was troubled. And if there's nothing else on this earth that troubles us, it's the trouble of losing somebody you love. It's the trouble of, can we call it, that we have with our faith? Lord, increase my faith. I, I, I want to believe so much that I don't have any doubts, but then I still have doubts because I'm, I'm no different than Peter, that's for sure. And then when we go into John 14, if you look at verse uh, 5 and 6, 
Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Can I say it this way? Thomas was troubled. Wasn't he troubled? He, and he, he said to Jesus, how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, didn't he? He said, I'm the way. How did, how, did he, how did Jesus make the way to heaven for us? Through the death, burial, and resurrection, right? That's how he made the way. And there's no other way to get there than to trust by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he did for your soul personally. It gets pretty personal. In John chapter 14 and verse 8, we read, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Just show us God and we'll believe. And, and Jesus knew better, and he knows better to this day, that what we see by sight isn't enough. There's something that goes deeper than sight, and it's called faith, my friend. There are people that were at the resurrection of Jesus Christ and saw him resurrected and yet still did not believe, even though he rose from the dead. It takes more. It takes something called faith. And we sit here and we say, the best I know, the best I know how I believe, Lord, increase my faith. And this is a good place to get it, isn't it? A little, little power boost, as it were. John chapter 11. Back up a few pages. I'm going to read verse 21 in John 11. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Jesus came to the funeral of some good friends. Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Jesus knew that Lazarus was sick and Jesus knew when Lazarus died. Can you put yourself in that position where Jesus knows that people we love are sick to this day and people know, or Jesus knows when they die. We are as troubled to this day, as the people we're talking about that were with Jesus on that day. Martha was troubled. And I know, if I know your human nature as, better, as good as mine, when you are really losing somebody you love, you would like to get a hold of Jesus and say, where were you? And that's what Martha said. Now Jesus said to her, you'll see your brother again. That takes faith. Then we read in verse 32 of that same chapter 11 now, Martha's sister Mary heard that Jesus had come to the funeral. And we read in verse 32, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Then we read on. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews, everyone at the funeral, also weeping, can we say they were troubled? which came with him, he, Jesus, groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He was troubled. It may be in a different way, right? Wasn't he troubled in the Garden of Gethsemane that night when he prayed and sweat as it were, great drops of blood? Because he knew that in just a small moment, he would be taking your sins and my sins and the sins of the whole world on him. He wasn't afraid to die. 
He was troubled about taking on the sin of the world and dying for those sins. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, right? So when you're troubled, guess who's troubled with you? And then guess who rose above it and said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I got a better place in my father's house. In my father's house are many mansions, right? In my father's house kind of takes up, let's just kind of envision with me, if you can, the, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of the heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, who's it prepared for? You, the church. This, in my father's house, we have, yes, the holy city. And what, what do we see? We, can you see the pearly gates? Well, maybe the best we can by faith. Each of you see it in a different way. The jasper walls, the golden streets. You look through the pearly gates and outside the jasper walls and you see in there the golden streets, the golden city. And that's in my father's house. That awaits you and has already been seen by those of our loved ones that have gone there already. And that's comforting. Ron said a simple, simple statement. He said that he's in a better place. In my father's house, but he goes further, doesn't he? In my father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. The father's house that Jesus prepared the way for with his death, burial, and resurrection, the father's house was made and prepared with blood, sweat, and tears, wasn't it? With his blood and his sweat while he was down here on earth. He sweat as it were great drops of blood and his tears. He wept often down here. Shortest verse and most wonderful verse ever said in the Bible was Jesus wept at Lazarus' funeral. He wept for us, and he wept with us. It's almost when you read about all tears being wiped away, maybe the greatest amount of tears will be his own. Because he weeps when you weep. And the angels he sends to help you, they weep when you weep. This is a troubled world that we live in. But thank the Lord, we have our faith and we have our Jesus and we have our heaven. And may I say even more so, we have family, right? A place for you. I want to contrast and I want you to think about this for a minute. Before you got saved, there was a place that God has already prepared for the devil and his angels, right? There was a place prepared, not for you, but where you were headed. Jesus prepared a place for you in heaven, a, man, a place you're going to call, it'll be a mansion to you. Lord, how did you know? How did you know that was my favorite color? How did you know I liked this? How did you know I'm really happy when I have this? And it's all there for you. You know, Jesus knows you better than you know yourself. That's prepared for you. But hell was not prepared for you. You're an uninvited and will be, and we're an uninvited guest if you go to hell. God never determined and decided, okay, I'm going to send this one to hell. I'm not even going to bother with them. God doesn't do that. He wants all. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So heaven's prepared for you. Hell isn't prepared for you. You will be an unv uninvited guest if you go to hell. And the demons are mad enough down there already, right? You're just getting in their way. 
Some people accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior because they don't want to go to hell, and that's a very good reason. Some people accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior because they want to go to heaven. That's a perp that was my reason. And above all, some people accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior because they want to see their family again in heaven. However you get him, get him, you know what I'm saying? It's all by faith. And to the best of my human ability, I'm trying to increase your faith a bit today, aren't I? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you, personally. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now, the word mansion in the original can be simply interpreted as a place, but that's okay with me. Just give me a sleeping bag and a set of golden golf clubs, and I'll be happy. But it's going to be far much more than that, isn't it? And if that's all I get up there, I'll come over and stay at your place. What's for supper? Well, you know, I'd already talked about Rosemary here later, earlier in the sermon, but... Uh... You win. <laughs> no, I would not, it would not be heaven without Rosemary for me. She's been my heaven on earth for 52 years, amongst other things, but then we go on here. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Well, he prepared the way, and he's the way, the truth, and the life. His death, burial, and resurrection has made the way, and there's no other way to get there. And he's prepared in his father's house. Now, his father's house, what we know so little about, we know somewhat about what the holy city itself is going to look like, and it's got jasper walls, pearly gates, and golden streets. And then he's going to, somewhere in God's, his father's house will be a place for you. Will there be a name on it? Yeah, I, I would imagine it's just going to, you're going to know it's your place. Well, when did he repair the place, prepare the place for me? The, the very day you got saved? And then some people, they... Uh, they know that God knows ahead of time who gets saved. He knows the beginning from the end. So maybe your place has had a name on it for quite some time. Maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of where the rest of your family is. Wouldn't that be nice? Mine will be way over here and Rosemary's way, way over there. <laughs> there I go again. Yeah, that husband thing. Yeah, We go to the store and... Um, the cash, cashier person will say, how are you doing today? And I'll say, just miserable. And she'll say, why? And I say, well, look who's with me. Oh. And then we get going. We're, we're like stand-up comics, and we're going back and forth. And uh, I say, you know, we've been married 52 years, and uh, in dog years, that's 300 and some years, and I'm just miserable. And uh, then, And then they try to cheer me up. And that's the only reason I tell you I'm miserable. If you say, how are you? And I say, I'm miserable. I just want you to cheer me up. It's, I don't get it at home. I mean, I just... Yeah. Hey, anyway, all right. First Thessalonians chapter 4, if you want to turn there, I'm going to read two verses out of it. Um, it reads this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Isn't that what faith is? The substance of things hoped for. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now let me go back to John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would go to prepare a place for you. And that 
I will come again and receive you unto myself, is the last part of his statement. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And when we read in with that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when he comes again, he's not coming alone. Can you grasp that? Can you grasp that by faith? That when he comes again, he's not coming alone. He's bringing them with him. We don't know the day or the hour. But those loved ones that are in heaven, someday along the way they're going to hear angel wings kind of fluttering like birds do in the middle, in the, in the morning in the trees. The, the wings are fluttering and they know something's up. And pretty soon God may say, up in heaven, in his house, he'll say, it's time. And those family members will be more excited than you because you're not aware that that's the day. And there they come. So when he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, we can almost say, they will come again. I will come again with them and receive you unto ourselves. Not just he's coming again, but they are coming again. In John 16, 22, he continues with the thought, in John 14, he said to his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. And in, in John 16, he's still dealing, in a sense, with realizing the disciples are troubled. And so are we. We're humans. We live here. We've seen a lot of troubles. He says this in verse 22 of John 16. And you now therefore have sorrow. Can you absorb that? And you now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And we now therefore have sorrow. But because he says, I will see you again, it means also we will see them again. Right? And your joy, no man will take from you. There was nothing more joyful on the face of this earth to my wife and I to have her give birth to two sons. What a joy. That first, that first child you have, that first son I had, it was the Syrian section, so there was this little doll in my hands with the, the biggest blue eyes. And, and, I, and I, up until that point, I didn't know whether I was even capable of being a daddy. You know, uh, would I get tired of them? Would they bother me or something? But as soon as that nurse set him in my arms, I melted. And I still melt to this day when I think of him. Right? Joy. And when he was three and a half years old, a man took him from us, a drunk driver. Just take it away, took away our joy. And the same with another son, that one we got to keep for 21 years. Beautiful. There's nothing more beautiful than your children. You could come to me and show me pictures of your children, and I'll try to pretend that that's a cute child. And I'll say, oh, but I, you know, you know the people that, that, that bring you the, the, the ultrasound pictures of the child? It just looks like a little rat in there. It just <laughs> all wrinkled up and it just is not, you know, and you want to say, oh, my goodness. And you're, But you have to say with as bright a face as you can, what's well, such a beautiful child.
but when you have your own, I could show you pictures and they're all beautiful to me, right? Joy. Your joy no man will ever take from you again. When you see them again, nobody will ever take that joy again, ever. Can, can, can we fathom that? By faith, you can simply sit there in the pew and say, I believe that. And that's your faith at work. I believe. I'm here because I believe today. I be here, I'm here because I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm, I'm here because I believe that he died for my sins on the cross of Calvary and that he was buried and that he rose again. I believe he made a way to heaven and I believe and remember the day I accepted him as my personal savior and I believe I'll get to see my sons again someday and that joy no man will ever be able to take from me ever again. Let not your heart be troubled. From living in a troubled world, like the disciples did then and we do to this day, from that to a place of no more trouble. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more tears, no more death. That's hard to believe. You want to know why? Because you and I live in the midst of trouble. But the one that took all your troubles, he bore them on the cross of Calvary, didn't he? And by his stripes, we will be healed. Amen. The hymn that we sang just before the message was, there's coming a day when no heartache shall come. Do you believe it? No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be, my friends. I can say with you from the truth of God's holy word, these are not my words, these are the words of God. We'll meet in heaven someday. And guess who told us? Jesus himself, let not your heart be troubled. And so when we have the invitation, just say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, increase my faith. And he will, and he does. May God bless the preaching of his holy word and bless you for coming today. Let's all stand.